Okay, class, how are you guys doing? <clears throat> so for the final project or the final exam, you're going to be creating a book jacket. I put all the information online, um, but I figure I'll go over the details here so it'll make life a little bit easier. Um, as I mentioned, this project is more focused on a production side, a technical side, and not so much a design. Not, not to say I want you to create a, a terrible design, a crappy design, but I want you to be able to focus on getting so they're getting the steps down. So this is what you'll be creating. You know, something similar to this. It doesn't have to look like mine. Um, you can put your images in, in a different place if you want. Um, but to get all the information that's in there, that's relevant. So you're going to be creating um, a book. When you make it flat, the cover of the book is always on the right-hand side, the spine, and then the back of the book is on the left-hand side. Uh, and then you have these flaps that will fold in. And then We'll be you'll be adding a logo and a barcode and some text in the back, a headline, information on the spine, a title, and a subtitle if you want. Um, and then adding a photo, um, which you can get from Creative Commons through Flickr, and some text about the... Uh, make sure whatever text you write, that you edit the text, that you make sure you have a... you know, proofread it, no spelling errors and stuff like that. Um, and always put the credits for the wherever you got the image wherever you got the photo, put the credits at the bottom. Okay, so how do we start this? So we know the dimensions of the cover and the back cover are 6 by 9 and the spine is 0.5 and the flaps are 2 inches each. So when we start off our Illustrator file, now the first thing we want to do is, <clears throat> is name our file, put jacket, I know, put your last name on it. Um, you only need one artboard. Everything should be on one artboard. Um, we create a custom size. So the first thing we'll do is we'll do uh, if you measure everything out. So we need the top to be six and six. That's twelve and two. That's fourteen and two. That's sixteen and the spine on the inside. So we need it to be inches. And we need it to be sixteen. 0.5 inches by 9 inches. That's the full size. We're also going to add a bleed. So the bleed is going to be 0.125. And the bleed is an extra space around the edge when the printer cuts that you don't have white spaces here. So we need, you, we'll, we'll add a bleed to this, which will be extra 0.125. You don't have to add that here. That's added automatically later on. And then I'll show you how to pull that. We want it to be CMYK. 300 dpi and then you say okay so 16.5 that's 6 and 6 is 12 12 and 4 is 16.5 okay and the height is 9 inches so we say okay and we should get an artboard that's full width of our piece <clears throat> so the first thing we want to do is to get a rectangle click in the middle and just type in 6 by 9, it's already inches. Okay, just lay that down. Um, then we'll create the flap, which is 2 by 9. So, if you, you want to align things, you can then you can use your align tool. Click on this little align to artboard, align it. So, click on the image, align left. It's going to go all the way over. You can copy and paste that, and then click this one. So I'm going to put some colors on these so you can see them easier. Let me get my swatches up. Put some color on this. So this one I'll make it green. This one I'll make it green. I'll make this one yellow. Green. So line that one up there like that. And then this one I'm going to align to the right. And this one I'm going to copy and paste and align right next to this one. And you can align these to the top. You can select each one, align the top. It's going to align to the top of the artboard. And then if we do this correctly, we have a 0.5 by 9. We'll make that blue. Right? So that's how you want to set up your flat your artboards or your spaces or panels in the uh, 
for the book jacket. So for your layers, so this because we're not really touching these colors right now, I want to create a layer and lock that last layer. So we have one layer and another layer. And the bottom layer, I'm going to lock that. And I'm going to put all my graphics on the second layer. If you want to have multiple layers, you can do that. If you want to have at least two, you can do this on one layer. It'll just be a little bit more of a pain because you have to keep selecting around things. So I'm going to select that. It's okay to leave the lines on, the outline on for now. I'll probably take it off afterwards. Okay, so on my top layer, so I need, first thing I need to have is some kind of headline. So a title. So I'm going to, you know, call it uh, Gone with the Wind. Okay, so I'm going to choose my font. Choose Optima and make that big, a nice big title. Now, your book could have an image on there if you wanted to, or you can have just text. Um, if you want to get interesting and create some, you know, some, now you have to use at least four effects on this. So, you know, the effects could be, you know, drop shadow, you can add some of these um, effects from the stylized, you can affect, you know, some other artistic effects. In here so it could be that the effect could be either on the type it could be on an image it could be on a background color you know so you can do something like you know your background if you wanted to put an effect artistic effect you know obviously you want it to kind of make sense right so gone with the wind I probably wouldn't use necessarily I would want to use something that uh, you know, maybe a grainy effect or a dry brush effect. You can't really see that much. So maybe I use that. So you know, some kind of effect on the background. And of course, if you use a flat color, you're not going to see it as much. But if you, if you had an image there, you can use an effect on there. So you have drop shadow, you have glows, you have um, different effects you can use. So at least four effects on here. Or any one of these. So you have your headline. You know, one of the things with design, you want you know leave a little bit of space, which is called a margin, around your text. Unless you were doing something where you want the text to be really big and overlap maybe different panels, that could be interesting too. So you have a title. Then I'm gonna copy and paste that, or just and I'm going to. Uh, So I'm going to make on um, the author. You don't have to put by the person's name, just put, you know, look at book jackets on Pinterest or look book jackets on Google and you'll see, it's, you know, they're all in different, different ways to do them. There's no one way to do a book jacket or a book cover. Um, so you have a title and you have your the author's name. If you want to have a subtitle, you can have a subtitle and every book has a subtitle. Um, maybe I'll make this. All caps. Okay, so you have your um, this, and then the easiest way to, to start making the spine <clears throat> is just to copy the same, copy and paste the same text. You know, make it smaller, make the text smaller. So I'm just using the uh, shift command and the arrows, but you could also just just go to your font and make it smaller. I'm going to make that white because I'm going to put it on this blue background. So make the box smaller. And then I want to use my rotation tool. And most of the time, uh, your text goes like this. So if you hold on the shift key, and then you can rotate the title, you know, 90 degrees. All right. Then you use that. Maybe a slightly large. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it down to about 24. Go up a little closer. So reuse the elements that you've already typed. So my name will also be on the spine. I'll copy and paste that. I'll use the rotation tool again to just rotate it. Hold the shift key down 
so you can get a 90 degree angle. I'm gonna make that white, and I'm also gonna make that maybe a little bit, maybe maybe 22, a little bit smaller than the title. So we have the title, and we have the name, author's name in there. Okay, and you can bring that down a little bit. You can line up with that. Okay, so good. So we have we have our flaps. We have a title in the, in the middle, and then we have the author's name. And then we want to bring an image in. So we wanna we wanna get an image of the CEO or image of the author. In this case, the author doesn't really matter. If you want to use your picture, that's fine. Um, so we're gonna create a box like right here. And then we're gonna get a photo. I'm gonna place that photo. So you know, Creative Commons is a great place to get um, photos. If you want to, uh, you know, go to Flickr.com, Creative Commons. You can search photos in here of different people. Or again, you can use your own photo if you wanted to. Um, just give attribution to the photo. Make sure you get the person's name, where you got the photo from, um, and actually put it into your into your project. That way, we're not plagiarizing somebody else's project. We're not we're not violating some sort of um, copyright law of using an image. We're not using it for profit, so we don't have to worry about it. But still, it's always a good practice if you borrow an image from from Flickr that you give attribution to that photo. So I've already gotten a photo. Let me make this a little smaller, and I have my photo already saved on my uh, hard drive. So you go to file, and you go to place. <clears throat> Excuse me, and you find that photo. So mine is called C or JPEG. When you first bring it in, you know it's a big photo. So I'll be, I want to be able to place it in here. So we'll use the mask tool to do that. So what you want to do is you want to put the photo behind that white box. So to do that, remember we we're doing everything on our layers. We can lock that layer, make sure that back layer is locked. And then with the image, you can just go to Object, Arrange, Center Back. So it's going to go behind the white box. So the white box is in the front, image at the bottom. You can move the image down wherever you want it to. We can make this image smaller, right? It doesn't have to be a, you know, you can crop part of it, it's fine. And you can always move it around after it's inside of the box. So to create that mask, you create, you select the white box, select the image, then go to Object, Clipping Mask, Make. It's going to automatically dump that photo inside of the box. Now the rest of the photo is still there. We didn't, we didn't clip it like we would do in Pathfinder. So if you click, if you use the Direct Selection tool, click away click that photo you'll still see the box around it and then you can kind of move it around it'll try nicely to get it centered if you think the photo is too small you can enlarge that photo if you hold on the uh, you can go to the uh, the scale tool double click on the scale tool you know dump it bump it up about 120 and you can get you know you can get that picture now this photo what's important about adding this photo is that because we linked the photo in Illustrator, if you send me an Illustrator file without that photo, I'll just see a box. I'll see an empty box. So what you want to do is embed that photo into the image, into the Illustrator file. So how you do that is go up to the Embed Tool option right here. So if you go to, if you have your image selected, make sure the image is selected, not the box. If you select the box by itself, you will not get that option. So you have to use the Direct Selection Tool click on the image, click away, deselect, select the image, make sure that the red box is around it, then go to embed. What that's going to do is it's going to actually like almost infuse the image inside of Illustrator. So you don't have to worry about sending me a separate image file when you send the file or send it to a printer. You just have a perfect embedded file in there. Okay, we'll continue with this on the next video.